Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you are watching and wherever you are watching from, I'm glad uh, that you can join me as we worship God together. I hope that you managed a long night this morning and took full advantage of that extra hour in bed. Of course, tonight uh, it will get dark even earlier. Those long summer nights are just a memory now. And even the red and gold leaves of autumn are beginning to fade as we settle in for what is um, always a long winter here in the east coast of Scotland. What was it our harvest hymn said last week? All is safely gathered in ere the winter storms begin. Well, I do hope that we won't have too many winter storms, but if yesterday's weather is anything to go by, then winter is already making its presence felt. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 90. God is with us here in this place and wherever his people are gathered. From everlasting to everlasting, he is God. In every generation, the people of God have been able to find their home and dwelling place in him. He has showered us with love since the beginning of time and guides us now through these days and this time of worship. Let us worship God. We begin our worship by singing our first hymn, CH4184. Sing to the Lord a joyful song.
Hat Chilipper leads us in the prayer of approach and the Lord's Prayer. May we find space unfilled with yesterday and left empty for tomorrow. May we find poetry unwritten and waiting for lines not yet voiced. May we find silence unhurried and hopeful for what is still to be imagined. May we find time unclaimed and eager for our dogma to be reframed. May we find truth unbiased and abiding in what pandemics reveal about us. May we find faith unafraid and daring to guide us on the way. In such times as these where a creative saviour invites tomorrow and dares us to follow and holy words are cast in what is yet to be and sacred stories speak in unfamiliar ways for this unfamiliar time and the kingdom calls us to prepare, be ready and newly imagine ourselves, our church, our communities. May we find you, O God, unbound and resurrected in this new moment of faith. And now, Lord, hear our prayer and the words you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever. Amen. Our scripture reading is read for us by Lynn Ross. The reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 34, verses 1 to 12. Then Moses climbed Mount Nebo from the plains of Moab to the top of the Pisgah, across from Jericho. There the Lord showed him the whole land, from Gilead to Dan, all of Naphtali, the territory of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev and the whole region from the valley of Jericho, the city of Palms as far as Zoar. Then the Lord said to him, this is the land I promise an oath to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob when I said, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you will not cross over into it. And Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in Moab, as the Lord had said. He buried him in Moab in the valley opposite Beth Peor, but to this day no one knows where his grave is. Moses was a hundred and twenty years old when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. The Israelites grieved for Moses in the plains of Moab thirty days until the time of weeping and mourning was over. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. So the Israelites listened to him and did what the Lord had commanded Moses. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face who did all those miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deeds that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. Amen. Well, poor old Moses. After 40 years of wandering through the wilderness, he is almost there poised to enter the promised land. But God tells Moses, I have let you see it with your eyes, but you won't get to cross over into it. So near and yet so far. And so Moses dies and the Israelites grieve for him. He's had a good long life. He's accomplished so much, but still, the end of his life is felt as a great loss, 
and the people cried for him for 30 days. A pity they couldn't have shown him some more love while he was still alive. For the last 40 years, Moses has led his people out of slavery in Egypt to Mount Sinai through many trials and now here they are at last about to enter the land that God promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob many generations before. When they enter the promised land though, it will be without their leader Moses. And to us who have journeyed with Moses over these last weeks, have watched him struggle with the overwhelming task that God had given him. A man who, remember, wasn't good with words and yet managed to stand up to the mighty Pharaoh. A man who put up with the incessant grumbling and complaining of the Israelites, but who was willing to stand in the breach for them when God threatened to wipe them all off the end of the earth. A man who had done so much that was right. A man who had performed signs and wonders by the power of God. And yet he doesn't get to lead his people into the promised land. It's difficult to read Deuteronomy 34 without a tear in your eye. Surely Moses, the servant of the Lord, more than anyone else, deserves to enter the promised land. But he dies before he gets there. No reason is given in the passage we read today as to why God decides that Moses is not to cross over into the promised land. You have to look back at Numbers chapter 20 to find a possible reason. Something obscure happened when Moses struck the rock and water was provided for the water to drink, for the people to drink. Moses was accused during that incident of breaking faith with God. He was told just to speak to the rock and water would gush forth. By doing this, he would show the Israelites just how holy God was. But instead, Moses chose to strike the rock and by this action, it implied that somehow he was responsible for the water. It's not something that's made clear in our readings from Exodus, uh, but you can read that incident for yourself in Numbers chapter 20. And so he doesn't get to lead his people into the promised land. It seems so unfair. What an injustice. Poor old Moses. But isn't that just life? I'm sure we can all remember disappointments in life. Things that we longed for, dreamed of, worked for. Things that we were promised or that we expected in life. But they haven't been realised yet. We keep going, walking by faith. Someday our ship will come in, as my mother used to say. Someday. If we look back on Moses' life, we can see what a difficult life he had right from the very beginning. Remember, he was the, the baby in the basket in the River Nile. His mo mother unable to keep him and giving him over uh, to be brought up by another family. Then the killing of an Egyptian while defending one of his own people meant that Moses had to flee from Pharaoh in danger of his life. And then having to lead his own people kicking and screaming out of Egypt. The hard life in the wilderness with such ungrateful, grumbling people. And then later, battles with the Amalekites and the Midianites and so on. His life is one of constant struggle. Just one thing after another. And yet there was so much blessing in his life mountaintop experiences, so much time spent in the presence of God. A man whom God was pleased with, a man God knew by name, marvellous encounters with God, an intimate relationship with God. The part of Exodus that we, we should have covered last week, but we didn't because we were celebrating harvest, tells the story of Moses asking God, show me your glory. 
And God's saying, no, because you would die. It would be too much for your human heart to bear. But I will hide you in the cleft of a rock and cover you with my hand. And I will pass you by and you will see my back. But now we see Moses looking into the promised land and knowing that he is never going to get there. Instead, he will die on Mount Nebo, all alone and away from his people. And it seems such a sad ending for Moses. We stand here too, still in the grip of this pandemic, not knowing what is in front of us. Maybe more hard times for some, more suffering, more pain. But one thing we should remember is this. I said that Moses was alone when he died, but of course he was never alone. God walked with Moses all his days, all the way to Mount Nebo, and never left him. And you know, perhaps not being able to enter the promised land was not actually the terrible injustice and unfair punishment that we think it was. Perhaps God was saying to this 120 year old man, you've done enough. I've seen your struggles, I've seen your suffering. The next part of the journey is not for you, it's Joshua's. And even though Moses' eyes were not weak and his strength was not gone, gone, maybe his heart was tired and God was saying, you've done your part, servant of the Lord, it's time to pass the baton. Moses, maybe in this earth, earthly life, didn't get into the promised land. But we know from the Gospels that he did get into the real promised land that is heaven. And we know that because there at the Mount of Transfiguration, we see Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. We might never get to see our dreams come true in this life. Even if we've worked hard and we've made sacrifices. Sometimes we never make it to what we think is the promised land in this world. And if we're not careful, the disappointment of that can ruin our lives, cause resentment and anger and even illness. We don't always get to live an uh, idyllic, trouble-free life. That's just the way life is. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. God keeps his promise to be with, with us to the end of the age, to never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus, just, just as he was with Moses all through his life, looking after him at the point of death and beyond. No matter our struggles and our disappointments in this life, a day will come when God will show us not just a glimpse of the promised land, but will welcome us into a new heaven and earth, a land that will flow with something far better than milk and honey. You may recognise this passage today that Lynn read for us from Deuteronomy 34. It's the same passage used by Dr Martin Luther King Jr. in April 1968, the night before he was assassinated, and he said to the crowd in Memphis, well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead. But it doesn't matter with me now, because I've been to the mountaintop, and I don't mind. Like anybody, I would like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. The example of Moses, Israel's first great prophet, brought a message of faith and hope to people who had so much to contend with. And really needed to hear that better days were coming. 
a story that continues to speak to us today. Even in the midst of our own struggles and disappointments, we know that we live in the now but not yet time. The promise has already been fulfilled through Jesus and we've seen a glimpse of eternity. A place where all tears will be wiped away. A place where all suffering is ended. A place where we will one day receive all that God has promised us. Amen. We sing again CH4162, the God of Abraham praise. God of the mountain top, in prayer you walk with us to the highest point from which we are offered an opportunity to view the world as you see it and the world as you would wish it to be. There is much for us to be thankful for, a roof over our heads and food on our table, people who love us, times of relaxation and work for our hands. And we thank you, God, for all that is good in our lives. Give us a glimpse into the lives of others, our neighbours, our community, our world. In prayer, our eyes are drawn to see those in need of love. In our community, here among our congregation and in the parish of which we are part. We pray for all those who grieve this day 
for all who miss a loved one, whose hearts are sore and who feel that no one else understands their pain. Be near to them, Lord, and assure them that you will never leave them. We pray for all those who struggle this day with loneliness, those who feel unloved, those who have never enjoyed the relationship they had hoped for. And we pray for those who feel alone, even when they are surrounded by others. We remember those living in poverty, those whose hopes and dreams have been crushed by circumstances out with their control. We pray especially this day for children who are hungry. Children, even in this land of Scotland, who live with the shame and humiliation caused by having to queue at food banks or borrow from neighbours. Those journeying through difficult childhoods, which will affect them long into adulthood and rob them of their dignity and damage their self-esteem. And we remember those who strive to relieve poverty, who fight for the hungry, for all who struggle for the cause of the exploited and the underprivileged. For those who sign petitions and campaign for change. For those who donate to food banks and those who love others without the need to ask if they are worthy of love. Lord, we pray for ourselves. Loving God, you are our hope, our strength and our shield our promise keeper and our light in the darkness. As we travel through life's journey, may your still small voice lead us to the place where we should be. May your presence be our constant companion, your fellowship the warmth we crave to help us on our way. From everlasting to everlasting, you are our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, glorified forever. Amen. Thank you to those who brought items for the food bank, to Mary's door or to the man's door. Um, of course, those items are required all year round, not just at harvest time. So if you're able to do so, please do continue to donate and to support the food bank. Um, thank you also to those who uh, supported Malawi Fruits. There will be a, a collection for the Syrian refugees on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday, 4th, 5th and 6th of November at the Mechanics Hall in Brecon. And if you can get to that, um, you can find out what kind of items they're looking for on the notice uh, on the screen at the end of the service. And I'll try and put that on Facebook as well. We're hoping to have a remembrance service on Sunday the 8th of November at 10.45 at Panbride Church. Uh, because of the layout of the church, we might be able to have more than just our 24 people to the in-person service. Uh, and if you want to attend that service, just as you want to attend any other in-person service, um, you have to uh, let Lynn know that you intend to come. So please do phone Lynn um, to arrange that. And you can do that on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening between 6pm and 8pm. And Lynn's number is 859905. As you know, it's not possible for me to do pastoral visiting at the moment to come and visit people as I normally would. However, it is permissible through the guidelines for me to come solely for prayer or holy communion, not, not for a cuppa or a chat, but solely for those things. And if you want me to come and visit you for those, please do phone me and we can arrange that. Please also pass that on to those who don't have internet access, but might want prayer or holy communion. Until we meet again. The world now is too dangerous and too beautiful for anything else but love. May your eyes be so blessed that you see God in everyone, your ears so you hear the cry of the poor, your, your lips so that you speak nothing but the truth in love. 
May your feet be so blessed, you run to those who need you. And may your heart be open, so set on fire that your love, your love changes everything. And may the blessing of the God who created you, who loves you, who sustains you, be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen.